you welcome to this uh, Frexim Nasima webinar on uh, Mamsa, on Mansa. So you most uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Jani Ibrahim. You may not be seeing me because uh, my video is not uh, on. I'm the chairman of the Nasima AFCFTA uh, committee. And it's our pleasure to, uh, to consolidate our partnership uh, with Afrexim, you know, and we've had one or two semi uh, uh, workshops with them in the past. And we'd like to thank them for their enthusiasm and the efforts and all the resources they're bringing, you know, onto this AFCFTA uh, um, program, you know, for the benefit of the whole of Africa. But we in Nigeria, you know, we're very particular about the dividends of AFCFTA. And that's why we have partnered with so many um, organizations, you know, to be able to educate the membership of NASIMA, the Nigerian uh, private sector, and also the public sector, so that we can take maximum advantage. And one of the key points, you know, that is important is the KYC, know your customer. You know, people want to know who they are dealing with, you know, in business. And that is why the Mansa project of uh, Afrexim lends itself you know, to knowing your customer. And it is very important that we should try and get as many businesses in Nigeria, you know, to be registered on that platform. Then it will make it easier for them, you know, to be able to transact uh, businesses with other African companies or other international companies that they, they want to get involved with. So on this note, I'd like to welcome uh, the representatives of uh, uh, the panelists from, uh, from Afrexim. Uh, one is our own, uh, Madam Basso, you are most welcome, and the other gentleman who will also be joining her later, you know, you are most welcome to, you know, for this presentation. I also want to use the opportunity to welcome uh, the president of, uh, of uh, Nasima Hadia Saratu Ia Aliu. She's on board with us as uh, an uh, I can see now that I'm, I'm happy that she's on board today because I'm, uh, she's not webinar fatigued. She's had so many webinars in the last few months. I don't know how she's been coping, but we're very happy to have her on the platform this morning. Uh, our Director General, Ambassador Ayo Olukoni, is also with us on this, uh, on this platform. I mean, he just came back from uh, uh, a program in Abuja where he went to sensitize you know, ambassador designates, you know, who have been posted to other countries, you know, to tell them the importance, you know, of, uh, of, uh, of the private sector engagement. And I'm sure one of the things that he told them is about partnering with international organizations and uh, agencies, you know, like Afrexim, UN, uh, uh, ECA, and other partners of NASIMA so far. So on that note, I also want to thank uh, the Secretariat for their support you know, uh, the support they're giving, you know, to, to us in trying to establish uh, uh, all these uh, laudable programs, you know, for the benefit, you know, of our members. So on that note, without too much, taking too much time, we're already, I mean, a few minutes behind schedule. I welcome all of us here. In, in the case of the panelists, when the time comes for them to make their presentation, they'll be properly introduced so that uh, we get to know the the people we are, we, are, we are working with them so that if we have questions and answers, you know, they may be able to, you know, attend to them. So distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again. And I wish us all a very, very fruitful and happy deliberation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alaji Jani Ibrahim, the chairman of the NASIMA AFCTA committee. Um, by your welcome remarks, thank you so much for um, declaring the webinar open. Uh, also, thank you for welcoming all distinguished participants and the panelists. Um, being shared on the screen now is the full agenda for the webinar. It's an hour, 30 minutes. Um, and we are on the second item of the agenda where we'll be getting or listening to the opening remarks from the national president of NASIMA in the person of Hajia, Hajia Saratsu Yaliu. You're very welcome. Man.
Hello, press, uh, MP Ma. I think your your mic is muted. Thank you. Well, good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I wish to start on existing protocol. Distinguished executives and members of NASIMA, city, state, and bilateral chambers of commerce, business associations, and NASIMA corporate members, I welcome you to this webinar organized by the NASIMA AFCFTA committee in collaboration with them um, in collaboration with Afrexim Bank Mansa to present and discuss the Mansa platform and other Nasima initiatives to support inter-African trade within and within the context of the African Continental Free Trade Area AFCT agreement. As you are aware, the, op uh, the op uh, operations under the AFCFTA commenced on the 1st of uh, January, 2021. However, a lot of questions remain with regards to the specific procedure for how the Nigerian private enterprise can benefit from this new market of 1.2 billion people. In the recent past, Nasima, through its AFCTA committee, chaired by Al Haji Jani Ibrahim, has held numerous sensitization events, capacity building workshops, and stakeholder engagements, uh, engagement programs to resolve these issues in the face of challenges such as the, uh, our Nigerian, in the, uh, Nigerian, our nation's independence or dependence on commodity products and exports and efficient transport infrastructure, poor trade logistics, high security risks, and complex clearance procedure, all of which contribute to high intra-African trade costs. In line with these activities, today's webinar focuses on trade in, um, information, which is one of the seven, pro, uh, seven programs on that which NASIMA seeks to promote such programs, cover trade policy, trade facilitation, productive capacity, trade-related infrastructure, trade finance and factor market integration. Under the trade information program, we seek to harness all available sources of information for the purpose of advocacy, business development and trade promotion. To this end, this webinar has been organized to present the various NASIMA initiatives to achieve the goal of boosting intra-African trade. Also, at this webinar, we will hear from the African Bank Mansa team, led by the amiable Maureen Mba, who will present to us the African Mansa platform designed to function as a centralized single source of primary data for performing, cost, uh, uh, for, 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 for performing customers due to diligence checks on counterparts in Africa and helping to establish the real identities of parties involved in trade transactions while ensuring that corporate bodies and SMEs comply with the law with the law, thereby establishing the basis of mutually beneficial business relations with trade counterparts. I must say that I look forward to these presentations and the discussions that will develop with regards to the specific ways that these initiatives will increase the market access opportunities 
for our members. I am confident that at the end of this webinar, the capacity of our members to trade under the AFCTA will be strengthened. In conclusion, please accept my assurance that Nasima will continue to collaborate with the African Bank and any other public or private sector uh, entity in activities such as these to promote the growth and development of private enterprises in our country. Once again, I welcome all distinguished speakers and participants and wish you all fruitful deliberations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Haji Asa, to Yali, National President of Nasima, uh, for gracing us with that um, very wonderful welcome remarks. Uh, we, ladies and gentlemen, um, once again, you're welcome to this webinar. Uh, we are at the point in the agenda where we will now get um, also the opening remarks from the representative of Mansa. On the agenda, um, we have her listed as Ms. Maureen Mba, the head of Mansa at Afrexin Bank, uh, but I do not see her on the call. Um, Pap, uh, who is the business development manager at Mansa, could you confirm if she will be speaking or if she will be represented? No, oh, she's sick. Yeah. Oh, okay. I am here, body and soul, right from <laughs> the beginning of the meeting. Oh, <laughs> good morning, Madam Ba. Your name is listed as Pap Dear. I was wondering why Pap was listed twice. Uh, I'm going to rename your, your device now to reflect your name. You're very welcome, ma. No problem at all. All right. So um, we're at that point of the agenda where we uh, we would listen to your opening remarks. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you very much. I will start by actually um, saying um, good morning to all of us and uh, happy new year 2021. May this year be filled with a lot of prospects and potentials as we drive the after and making to make it a more uh, lucrative opportunity for all our entities, both private sector, when we talk about the private sector, the SMEs, the corporate entities, and of course the financial institutions all over Africa. Um, Africa is emerging and coming together will make us great again. We will put our con continent in the world map again and it will take its proper place at the Committee of Nations. Uh, may I say Ranki Shidere to Hajia Salia Saratu um, Aliu, the Honorable Good morning, Marie. Good morning. I just want to address that point that uh, Al Haji Jani Ibrahim made when he said Maureen is one of us. I just want to yeah. let you know that I am a true Nigerian. I say, yes, uh, so we can, uh, that I'm all over in Nigeria, true Nigeria. Um, thank you very much. I've been able to listen to the opening remarks of his, of, uh, his Excellency Al Haji Jani Ibrahim, Her Excellency Haji Saratwi Ialiu. I'm happy also to, uh, to uh, say a big good morning to His Excellency Ambassador Ayo Lukani. Um, I believe this is not our first meeting. We have had an initial meeting with you whereby we introduced the Mansa platform. And I'm happy to say that Afrexim Bank is actually grateful to Nasima and our collaboration so far. We see us uh, doing a lot of things together and together, not only making the continent great, but making our country, Nigeria, a better place to trade, to buy and sell. And uh, we see the after playing a catalytical role in, the, in, that, in that respect. Um, to enable us to uh, move forward, I just want to say that uh, Mansa actually it's a centralized due diligence repository, just like the president stated. And um, of course, 
uh, we have taken this, the bank has taken this into its hands to ensure that with the coming on board of AFTA, that trade in Africa will be seamless. You will agree with me that when we talk about intra-African trade, what does AFTA, what is AFTA doing? Intra-African trade is to promote trade within Africa, human capital, services, and of course, the businesses we do in our respective sectors. And if we don't have a, a, an in, a tool like AFTA, that business will not thrive because this AFTA has come to remove some of those trade barriers we envisage in the continent. And we're happy to say we are going to make the utmost benefit of, of uh, AFTA. And Mansa plays a catalytical role again in this trade in AFTA because Mansa promotes intra-African trade and also trade with the rest of the world. Um, we'll play a very short video of five minutes, which will actually give you a summary. Where did it derive the name Mansa? What are we doing? What is Mansa all about? Because if I should talk, um, all what I'm going to say will be represented again in that uh, video. But just a background, Mansa, because Afrex Bank has a, a fifth strategic plan, and that plan is ending this year. And that plan talks to four important pillars. One of them, the core one is the intra-African trade, which gave birth to AFTA. The, the other one is export development and industrialization in Africa. Just like Hajia said, you will agree with me that we are noted as a raw commodity continent, primary commodity. We don't process our goods. Even if we do, we don't do it to that maximum of using the resources we have on the continent. So with this, uh, with the, with the, with, with this, uh, Mans with the Mansa, Mansa will help you to grow your business, to start transforming your produce to finished goods with you, which will earn you more income revenue, give you visibility in your business, promote and expand your business. And it will give you access to international financing and even domestic financing as well. It will help to create job opportunities for our growing youth in the continent. And you can see with all these benefits, why do we want to lose sight of that? Again, in the continent, we have information asymmetry. You cannot go and say, I get information about X, Y, Z. Even when it's a company, you have to sort of go round and round before you can collect a, a, a comprehensive information about that continent. Mansa is the answer. Mansa has been put in place to ensure that we bring all our entities under one umbrella which makes it a one-stop shop for any investor, any, uh, a, 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 any trader who wants to actually engage with other partners in Africa. We have three pillars on the Mansa platform. The first one actually talks to the KYC CDD, which we are focusing. The second one talks to invest in Africa, which we provide you the moment on a click of a button on the Mansa plot on any map, on African map on the Mansa platform. It will provide you information about a country, Nigeria, what is its comparative ad advantage? What is its GDP? What is the statistics of the country? as a whole, what are the states in the country? It gives you all those information about the, about the country. And if you want to deep, drive, deep dive, it takes you to the trade information portal, which is another initiative of the bank. And that gives you more detailed information about an entity you want to trade with. In the, in, the, in the continent. Also, we have the third pillar, which talks to news and event, like Nasima or like any other agency wants to advertise either its annual meeting or there are new developments, there are innovative ideas that have come into play, which you are driving. You want to let showcase it to the rest of the world. Mansa is the answer. Mansa will help you to do that advert. Putting your information on the platform as a contributor, you don't need to pay anything. It's free. Where you will have to, we have three 
categories of customers. We have the financial institutions, we have the corporate entities themselves, and we have the SMEs. We actually concentrate on the SMEs because we want to grow the SMEs for the reasons and for the benefits I've earlier alluded to. Because our SME is a one-man business. You go to talk to him, he'll say, oh, I'm a one-man business, I don't need it. But you need to expand your business. You don't want to stay in that comfort zone forever. You need to expand your business. So Mansa is the answer will help you to grow your business and put your that structure that is required. So we see you, Mansa playing that role to enable you to create that good governance, put that structure, governance structure in place that we give you who, who are you, what are you doing, who are your board members, even if it's you and your family, then you have your management, you must have some experts to help, help you grow your business and the rest of it, you have your cash flow. So these are the just the primary questions that is being asked by any investor. So again, that will help our SMEs to grow, that will provide them that visibility and opportunity to make their business, to expand their businesses. So these are the three categories we have on our CDD KYC information. How do we manage those information? When they come on the platform, we have every entity signing off on the contributor agreement. Today we have the central banks as the verifier of information for the financial institutions reporting to them. We also have the credit bureaus, the stock exchanges, the chambers of commerce, NASIMA, whom we are thinking will, uh, will, will actually, who is a potential agency for Afrex in bank and how we going to work with NASIMA to ensure that we all bring this, bring our, our SMEs particularly, bring them up to speed and give them that opportunity to thrive and grow their businesses. So these are, these, these, are, these, these are some of the players. So we have the stock exchanges, the, the institutions like Nasima, who have some re, uh, regulatory, uh, uh, who are, whom we see as regulators as well, who will help us to make sure to drive this uh, important uh, tool to, uh, to the grassroots and make everybody abide by this important uh, demand. Again, once you register on the Mansa platform, you have the AEI. AEI is the African Entity Identifier, which will provide you with the code. So when you are trading, when you want to trade with after, you have to produce the first thing that will be asked, what is your, Afri what is, uh, your Mansa I I I um, identity code? Then you provide that AEI. Once you register on the platform, you are given that code. Your administrator will be responsible to actually upload information on the platform. They will be, they will be responsible to upload, uh, to update any information. If there's any change in your business or anything, they, uh, they are, your administrator will work with you and we'll work on that. Uh, we'll work with um, uh, Afred Bank. I'm sorry. And once those information have been put on, Nasima as the agent will now verify those information before they are moved. Remember, we're trying to remove that negative perception about doing business in Africa. One of them being lack of information um, on, in the, on entities in Africa, the cost of the huge cost of doing com, uh, compliance in Africa. Africa is not, uh, does, it's not a place to do business. We want to remove remove that perception and actually let our entity people, we see investors, they should, they're still coming to the continent. But again, we want to make sure we streamline and actually formalize all these processes and have a system, particularly with the after in force, we need to do things right. And we are creating Mansa, we see it as a credible and authentic um, platform. So any information you receive on Mansa, you know that it's authentic and credible. That's why we are partnering like institutions like you. And of course, um, that will bring me, if you allow me, let me invite my colleague, Pap. He will showcase that five minutes video. I'm sorry, I don't want to take much of your time, but I think it's essential we see this video. Pap, can you please go on board? Thank you. Yes, okay, if it is ready because I have already shared, okay? 
Yes, it's coming up shortly. Okay. It's coming up. Mansa, Africa's due diligence. Mansa, Africa's due diligence data platform, is named after Mansa Musa, who was the 10th emperor of the Mali Empire. He is credited with placing Africa on the world map and opening up many trade routes in the 14th century, as during his reign, the Malian Empire may have been the largest producer of gold in the world. He is said to be the only man ever to control the flow of gold between Africa and the Mediterranean. Today, Information is the new gold, and the Mansa repository provides a single source of Africa-wide primary data required to conduct customer due diligence checks on African counterparties. It facilitates the availability of Know Your Customer KYC information of African entities. Whilst promoting good governance practices, the Mansa platform delivers insight into Africa with the ultimate aim of increasing trade. It does this through access to intelligence on due diligence to enable trade, as well by revealing the investment environment and opportunities to promote trade. Today, Mansa aspires to leave a legacy for trade through enhanced trading relationships and changing the perception of risk on the continent. Mansa features Africa-focused data and information, online access, one-stop place for sharing and accessing of due diligence data, collated information for KYC checks in line with global standards, self-service onboarding of contributors and subscribers, fully automated customer due diligence, CDD profile workflow, independent corroboration process for contributed data and information, availability of country profiles and investment climate, single window to access investment promotion agencies of all African countries, access to top intra-African traded products. The Mansa's key players include Afrexim Bank, the operator of the platform, contributors, financial institutions, corporates and small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, who voluntarily contribute their data on the repository, subscribers, consumers of the data and information shared on the repository. Subscription is open to all after verification of access. Verifiers, entities that have coordinating or regulatory authorities, as well as associations, registries and credible market entities, such as top four firms, credit bureaus, corporate affairs commission, stock exchanges and others. The benefits of Mansa are numerous in addressing today's trade challenges. The most important being, for subscribers, one-stop access to CDD information on African counterparties, smoothening of African entities' customer onboarding, reduced compliance costs, consistency of CDD information across various entities in Africa through standardized templates in line with global best practices and standards, provision of visibility on ultimate beneficial owners, UBO. For contributors, enhanced regulatory compliance through use of standardized template, ensuring consistency of customer due diligence information, CDD. Reduced regulatory risk. Increase in transparency, potentially leading to expansion of trade or business relationships in Africa and the rest of the world. Promotion of the integrity of your organization and business owners through credible and independently corroborated data, potentially reducing current high barriers to access to capital, particularly for SMEs. Reduced compliance costs. For Africa, vis-a-vis -vis the development impact, governance, Africa-wide impact, risk management, trade promotion, single primary source for KYC, in the final analysis, Mansa is a digital platform that aims to leave a legacy for trade on the continent by addressing de-risking and changing perceptions through providing insight into Africa in the form of intelligence on due diligence data for enhanced regulatory compliance, as well as information on investing in Africa. Its ultimate aim is to enable increased trade with Africa and in Africa. Mansa is the answer we are looking for to bring international financing back into Africa. 
because of rising compliance costs, we've had many international banks cut credit lines to African institutions. Many countries have barely one confirming bank, uh, thereby creating big problems for the continent. Mansa is an answer to that. Mansa would create the opportunity for uh, institutions that want to do business for Africa to, uh, to gain access to the customer due diligence information they require without uh, getting involved in activities that cost so much money. So it will reduce the compliance costs significantly and therefore open the doors of Africa to international trade finance banks again. We hope that this will be a major contribution to the drive uh, trade finance gap we currently uh, see in Africa. Mansa, Africa's due diligence data platform. Thank you, Okwe. And um, I yeah, may I apologize because um, at the beginning, I was supposed to extend the president's um, gratitude to the Nasima um, uh, uh, to the Nasima executives uh, for organizing this. He would have been here with us. Unfortunately, he's attending another uh, forum, which is we, which we call the communication forum, and he is chairing it. He has asked me to extend his sincere greetings and wish we and wish you all a happy new year. So please uh, forgive me for that oversight. Thank you. We'll now leave the floor for questions that may arise. Thank you very much, um, President, Honorable uh, Ambassador, and of course, Chairman of AFTA Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Maureen Mba, the head of Mansa of the Afrex Bank. Uh, we, we really appreciate you taking out the time to attend this webinar uh, and sharing with us insights with regards to how Afrex Bank Mansa can be of benefit to our members. Uh, I'll appeal to participants to note down their questions um, because there'll be two presentations uh, coming up shortly and we want to take all questions and answers uh, at the end of uh, those presentations. At the, in the first presentation which I will be taking, I would uh, be presenting to members how um, this webinar presents to us initiatives that help us promote our business within the context of the AFCTA. After that, um, Mr. Pap Da. Uh, who is the Mansa Business Development Manager for um, West Africa and Francophone uh, Africa would be making a further presentation of exactly how the Mansa platform works. Uh, after that, we'll take our question and answer session, and then there will be the vote of thanks uh, from the DG Nasima Ambassador Ayola. Uh, Okay, so uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, I'll be making a very quick presentation that seeks to put these initiatives in context of the AFCTA and exactly how uh, these initiatives promote uh, members' businesses. Uh, and then we'll now zero in on Mansa specifically and how Mansa uh, helps individual member businesses within the context of boosting intra-Africa trade. Um, so first of all, I would like to say that boosting intra-Africa trade is all about economic integration of how we can trade across borders. Um, economic integration, as we all know, starts with having a free trade area, then a customs union, then a common market, and so on. Uh, the most popular economic integration that we have currently in West Africa is ECOWAS and the ability to trade across the ECOWAS region uh, using the ETLS. Um, with all the uh, publicity that has been going on 
with regards to the AFCTA, the one thing we would want to always emphasize to members is that it is about competition. It is about the possibility of Nigerian businesses uh, being able to appeal to a larger market for our products and services, as well as being able to find alternative sources of raw materials. As you would see from the slide on the screen, uh, Nigeria remains the largest market in Africa when it comes to population size. Uh, you see the green space represents the population size of Nigeria. Uh, and you see that Nigeria already dominates West Africa with regards to uh, markets. However, uh, Nigerian population constitutes 20% of the African market, which is still uh, one of the largest single blocks when it comes to countries. So competition is the name of the game when it comes to the AFCTA. Uh, I want to do a quick recap on the timeline of um, what has happened within the AFCTA space, starting from the 21st March, 2018, where the AFCTA was launched in Kigali, Rwanda. Then um, there was an uproar because Nigeria did not sign up to the AFCTA as at then. The private sector raised concerns with uh, regards to the lack of stakeholder sensitization uh, with the lack of uh, an impact and readiness assessment to see if Nigeria would benefit from the AFCTA. Uh, following that refusal to sign, the federal government went into a period of sensitization and um, put together an impact and readiness assessment to look into these issues. Nasima participated at that committee extensively. And on the 25th of May, 2019, um, a report was published, the report on the AFCTA impact and readiness assessment. On the 30th of May, 2019, the AFCTA came into force with the required number of countries signing up and ratifying. Uh, on the 7th of July, 2019, Nigeria eventually signed uh, at the eve of the extraordinary summit of heads of states held in Niger Republic. Um, Following this, the Nasima AFCTA committee went into a series of dialogue uh, events to further sensitize members on the issues of the AFCTA, what it's about, and how members can prepare themselves to trade. The first of these events was held on the 30th of July, 2019. The second one was held on the 21st of August, 2019. And the third one was held on the 31st of October, 2019. The first event, um, looked at the AFCTA in general. The second event looked at the current state of negotiations and the third event focused on trade in goods. On the 5th of December, 2020, Nigeria finally deposited its instrument of ratification of the AFCTA. Um, and on the 1st of January, 2021, the AFCTA commenced operations. Two things to note um, in with regards to, just like our national president, Haji Asaratu stated, uh, Nasima is focusing on seven areas to which we can promote members' businesses. We are currently focused in our advocacy on trade policy. We are working with the Ministry of Industry with regards to trade facilitation. We are working on uh, capacity building programs to strengthen the productive capacity of our members. We are um, fostering PPP partnerships to see if we can strengthen trade-related infrastructure. Um, this kind of partnership with Afrexim Bank are the kinds of partnerships we're seeking in order to promote trade finance. Also, this kind of partnerships is what we're also promoting in order to boost our members' access to trade information and also factor market integration. Today's webinar focuses on trade information because it's about um, how our members can be readily accessible to other African countries. Like uh, Madam Maureen Mbad stated, the Mansa platform, for example, will expose members as being trusted and verified companies with which other African stakeholders can do business. So today's webinar focuses on trade information and how we can harness this to boost the competitiveness of 
the Nigerian private sector. The second thing to note is that the impact and assessment uh, report has already listed the areas where Nigeria has comparative advantage. Agricultural products, manufactured products, especially in beverages and tobacco, crude materials um, and services, entertainment, communications, legal and medical. But although these are our areas of competitive advantage, if no one in Africa knows that we have these things, then our competitive uh, ability will be reduced. So this webinar and the initiatives that we'll be presenting aims to increase the exposure of our members and their products and services in such a way that other African countries will readily find Nigerian enterprises and will be willing to transact with them because of the level of trust that has been established. I will be making a very short presentation on the uh, Nasima Market Access Platform and what it does in this area. And after my presentation, Mr. Pap DIA will be making a presentation on the African Bank Mansa Platform and how it helps to strengthen the trust of African stakeholders in Nigerian enterprises that sign up to the platform by providing credible information with regards to who uh, are the um, management and what are the resources that th uh, those companies have. So what's the Nasima Access Platform and what does it do? Nasima Market Access Platform basically provides the answer to five questions about the Nigerian enterprise. Who are you, your company name and description? Where are you located within Nigeria? What do you do? Which economic sector do you operate in based on the international standard of industrial classification? What are your product inputs? What are the raw materials you use for production? The consumables and packaging you use based on their HS codes? And what are your outputs? Your finished products, your byproducts, your waste products, also based on their HS codes. By answering these five questions, Nasima seeks to continue to promote the businesses of our members by using this information in our trade promotion activities when we engage with uh, diplomatic missions and embassies. We would always be able to package this information by saying these are the things our members produce and these are the things that they require as inputs, thereby boosting both intra-Nigeria and intra-Africa trade. So how do you proceed um, to activate your information being available on the Nasima Market Access Platform as a member. The first thing you do is you request for access, uh, you log in, and then you go to your dashboard. On your dashboard, you provide answers to these five questions that I have highlighted, your organization details, who are the contacts within your organization that um, people looking to transact business with you would be able to contact, what are the economic sectors in which you operate? Provide us with your production inputs. What are the things you need as raw materials, consumables, or packaging? And provide us with your production outputs. What are the things that you sell? The things you throw away, but might actually be of value to other people. And the things you consider as byproducts, but are also of value to other people. With this information, Nasima will be able to provide periodic updates by matching. We will be able to match you with people who have indicated that they are suppliers of your inputs. And would also be able to match you with other companies that have indicated that they are buyers of your inputs, I mean, of your outputs, thereby increasing your exposure, your market access, both within Nigeria and in Africa. Nasima would also be able to include your business in all relevant communication with diplomatic missions, trade promotion agencies, development agencies and under investment prospects, just like the AfriExim Mansa platform we're discussing today. This collaboration is one of those things that would ensure greater exposure by Nasima providing your information to such agencies with your permission. So what are the next steps? Basically just assign a focal person within your organization who will manage your presence on the Nasima access platform, request for access and then provide the necessary feedback. Thank you very much. Um, we'll, I would uh, hold on for your questions at the end of the presentation that will be made by Mr. Pap DIA. Thank you for listening. Uh, Pap, 
Uh, yes. The floor is yours. Thank you, Ope. Uh, uh, do I have the right to share my screen? Um, hold on one second. Could you try now? Yes, okay, that's fine. Okay. Good morning, uh, uh, distinguished authorities. Uh, good morning, distinguished uh, participants. My name is uh, Pat J in charge of Mansa Business Development in Franco, Anglo, um, uh, and Central uh, uh, Africa. Um, thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to speak in this important web webinar with our partner, uh, Nasima. Um, uh, Madam Mooring, Head Mansa spoke about Mansa, its purpose, and the vision of Afrexim Bank. The five minute video highlighted the Mansa platform features. I will go uh, straight to share um, of the contribution process on Mansa platform because, at the end, this is uh, what we will need from Nasima members. Um, first of all, uh, before sharing uh, uh, the process, let me just highlight the required doc to start uh, to prepare uh, the, the registration and the and the contribution process um, first of all we will need the members to have the contribution agreement signed mansa contribution agreement signed the administrative letter to be to 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 to, to, to be signed filled and signed this administrative letter will give rights to the administrator to, um, to, 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 to manage the profile of the entity on the platform. We have already shared those documents with uh, OPE. And also the last document is the certificate of incorporation we're gonna need for the registration uh, process. Um, I wanted to uh, do a contribution of a profile uh, uh, remotely online, but unfortunately, it might take uh, more than one hour. So what I did is I uh, described the full process of, 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 of contributing uh, on Mansa that I will uh, present uh, during my, 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 my presentation, my session. Okay, so first of all, uh, the, the, the CDD information which will be filled and uploaded on Mansa is a standardized global template which aligns with best practices. So this template has been already also shared with uh, OPE, with Nasima, and it is arranged as a group of six class of information, uh, namely uh, identification, ownership and management, business information, compliance information, financial information, and other information. I will come back uh, at the end of the presentation to show you also what are the mandatory and the optional information for the SMEs. So first of all, uh, to contribute, we have to go to the, uh, to the link um, www.mansaafrica.com. So you will see this inter interface where you have to log in to Mansa. On the, on the, on the uh, left side, you will see register as verifier, register as contributor, and register as agents. I don't know, uh, can, can you see my screen? Is it okay from your end? Yes, Pap, we can see your screen. Uh, yes. If you could do full screen, it would be better, but we can. Okay, let me do screen. full screen, yes. Let me do full screen. Much better, Pap. Okay, that's fine. So here, you, 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 so you have to click to register as contributor. So you have this window that will be displayed to create your account. Okay, so uh, I create a fake account, uh, J with my email address, with my password, with the captcha that I have to tick the country Nigeria, and I tick here, create my account. If I do this, I will get this message from the platform that my registration is successful. Your account has been successfully registered. Please check your email to activate your account. So I go to my email inbox for Papis 2021. This is my email, and I will see this email populating in my inbox registration. So when I click in this registration message, 
I will get this message. Dear Papa Gay, congratulations. Your registration has been completed successfully. Please click on the link to activate your account. So I click in this link to activate my account and I will get this message. Your account has been activated. Click here to continue with the registration of your organization. So it is uh, a self onboarding uh, platform and it is very simple. So um, after receiving this message now, I go back to the platform www.mansaafrica.com and input my credential access, papis 2021 disposablecom and my password. And here now I will see on the left, on the left uh, side, register as contributor. So now I am starting to register the, 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 the entity. So I create this, uh, sorry, uh, this fake uh, name, African Logistic and Transport Incorporation for just testing purpose. With this business uh, registration number, country Nigeria, postal code, address. So this is what I was highlighting, the first class of the CDD information, which is the, 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 the registration of the profile, okay? So um, Nigeria, uh, address, telephone, email, website, uh, fax, uh, company registration document. I highlight also in my uh, speech, uh, preliminary speech, that the company should also have uh, the company registration document ready. Okay, are you a financial institution? No. Are you a regulator or special entity? No. Are you a subsidiary? Yes or no. Are you an SME? Yes. Okay, I uh, just upload the, the logo of the company and just uh, uh, text summarizing the business uh, of the company uh, that African Logistics is a logistic company that is in Pula and Express. Okay, so this is an overview of the company. I click on continue and I will uh, reach now the step two where I have now to input uh, the administrator details. Madam Maureen highlight this point, which is very important because the administrator of the entity is uh, in charge of managing the profiles on the platform, uh, platform uh, updating any information uh, related to the profiles with role of input of a maker checker, depending on the organization of the, of the, of the, of the uh, entity. I will come back to this role uh, maker checker. So after inputting all this information, Papa J uh, email uh, job title, here, telephone, letter of authorization. I mentioned this also uh, during my preliminary speech to say that uh, the entity should uh, have ready also the letter of authorization means the letter appointing the administrator of the entity, okay? And this is what we should upload here. Uh, and this question uh, is related to the role of the administrator for the entity. Will the administrator also have make a checker? Here, it is very important because uh, when you when when you separate the two roles, when you make a profile, there is somebody else who should check. But also, you can give this, the two roles to one person, make a checker, but create another user with make a checker. So one one uh, if one person makes the other checks. Okay, this is how we separate the roles. Okay, when you are ready to input this information, you click on continue. And now you will reach the step three of the of the uh, of the registration process with the summarize summary of the entity details. So here you have the option to come back to uh, modify any information or add any information if you did mistake during the uh, registration. This is with this red red uh, edit button. So this is the summarize of all the information I input to register the profiles. And uh, now when you are ready, you are sure that everything is okay, you submit for authorization. So this, um, this registration will come back to the operator, which is uh, Afexin Bank, and Afexin Bank will approve. As soon as now the, 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 the registration, uh, the registered company is approved, you come back to your login page to log in on Mansa and now start the contribution process. So to start the contribution, as soon as the, 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 the profile is, is uh, approved, now you go to contribute, okay? And in this uh, tab, you will check the name of your company, African Logistic and Transport Incorporation. 
So all the details that you previously inputted uh, will display here with the business number that I put uh, in the research person, the country, you know, all these address, telephone, email, website, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you have all, all these information that are already uh, here because during the registration person, you filled all this information, okay? And now um, you continue, you click on continue, and you will get this, the first page of uh, the, 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 the CDD information, which is the identifications. So here, you will see on the top, the step one by one as soon as you progress. So the identifications will um, provide all the identification information of the company. So we have the company, the legal form, the registrar's address, uh, the principal place of business, all this information that you have to put, email, website, the contact person, Papa J, etc. Okay, the internal, uh, internal, external auditors, Okay, if you have external auditors, but I will come back to the mandatory and, 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 and optional fields because I, I, I just feel the maximum that I can or we, we, we have uh, of the profiles. Sorry, Pap, may I interject? Yes. You, missed to, you missed to showcase the uh, AEI because- Oh, you... sorry, Maureen. Sorry, sorry. The That's AEI. it, yeah. No, no, no. Go down, go down, go down, go down. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. No, no, no. Go, go up again. You missed it again. That's it here, here, AEI. Yes, yes there, is the, the, there is the AEI, sorry, African entity. And it's, it's because you, are, you talked about, but I will come, I'll come back to this also, to say that this is very important because this is your identification on the platform. And as Maureen was mentioning, this AEI will open several opportunities uh, in, in the after uh, coming uh, project, but also in the PAPS which you will allow you to transact into the platforms and trade with your local currency. So uh, maybe uh, we will discuss this uh, uh, later, but this is very important and this gives you an identity for your company uh, uh, generated automatically by the platform, okay? Uh, the external auditors, uh, you have to fill all the information, the name, telephone, website, street address, email and you, 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 you just uh, tick on add and it will populate on the table here. Uh, after that, you have now to put your business license, okay, your business license uh, here, you put the license number, date of assurance, renewal date if you have it, and you just tick on add and you have all populated here. The company registration document, which is very important and even mandatory, I will show you at the end of my process what are the mandatory and optional fields. So the company registration here with the date of issuance and the uh, ID number. Okay, the object of establishment, if you have it. The tax certificate, does your company have a tax certificate on yes or no? Okay, and when you, you, you finish this page, you have to select now your independent reviewing verification uh, entity for, for, for this section. So as mentioned, uh, uh, Maureen was mentioning, uh, verifiers are entities who independently conduct verification of the CDD information uploaded by uh, the contributor, and this includes regulators, recognized law audit firms, credit bureaus, and other government bodies and registries. Uh, we, on this case, we can have NASIMA as the independent uh, reviewing or verifier entity of uh, NASIMA members. So you have to tick here and now to to continue your process. So here I just tick uh, uh, Nigeria verifying entity seven, which was uploaded in the system, and I continue. Okay. The second um, the second uh, class of information is the shareholder structure. So here I create just uh, two names: uh, Isufu Dayo, male. Uh, he has uh, fifty percent of shares. Uh, the contact mail, nationality, and the passport ID. Okay, so I have an, another name is Eneka Alabi. So the, these are the names that I create with their shares and their passport and, and nationality and others. So this is the shareholder structure. And you upload just the document if you have the document, uh, the shareholder, which is the shareholder list. Okay, you have, we have the next point, which is very important, the ultimate beneficiary owners. Who are the ultimate beneficiary owners of the shares? So here in this case, okay, uh, maybe if you, 
if you have, for example, in, uh, instead of Isufu Dayo or Emeka Alabi, if you have corporate, for example, it is good to have who are the individuals or the corporate behind the shares of those uh, uh, sh sh shareholders. So that's why here we have this window where you have also to uh, provide all the information related to the ultimate beneficiary owners of the shares and with the declaration also to upload here uh, as uh, uh, shown here on the, on the platform. After that, you have the board of directors. Okay, I just mentioned that the uh, main shareholders are in the board of directors with their profiles, CVs or biography. Okay, the management structure, uh, also I put these two names as the CEO and the financial head uh, control. So all the management structure should be input here with the executive management profiles. So uh, the organization structure, if you have it, the organogram and the independent review, which is Nigeria verify, verifying entity. So you tick on continue and you have the next uh, uh, window, which is the, the, the legal advisor. Uh, if you have a legal advisor, either external or internal of, uh, of the entity and the uh, product of uh, services, uh, uh, OPE, you were mentioning that you collect the information related to the ISIC uh, classification of your members. We have the same here uh, in the platform. Um, so we will uh, input the ISIC industry, the ISIC subdivision, CPC product, which is the international standards. Uh, in terms of uh, industry classifications. Uh, the age of business, how many years have you been uh, uh, operating your business? Okay, um, the suppliers, if you have your supplier's name, email address, telephone type of business, I just input uh, names. Distributors, if you have it. Uh, the company business banking details, who, who is your banker, if you have the, 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 the details. Okay, the accountant, the bookkeeper, Either you have your uh, an external accountant or internal accountant or your financial director, input the information here. The branch network, if you have local branch or overseas branch, okay, and uh, contributor affiliates is for groups, for example, for which uh, affiliates uh, have contributed to Mansa to link the group to the affiliates, uh, to the contributor affiliates. And after that, you pick as usual for any page or for every page, the verify, uh, Verify entity. You continue, and now you will reach the compliance um, part, which is uh, normally a question you have just to read and to tick yes, yes, yes. If it is no, you have to just comment and give us uh, details. Okay, uh, authorized person, it is mainly uh, the compliance uh, person of the entity or the legal person or the, the person who is into, authorized to, you know, to input data or to manage the, you know, the, the, the profile uh, on behalf of the entity. Uh, it can be the, the, the administrator, but it can be also another person. Okay. And after that, you, um, if all these documents are not mandatory, but are not mandatory, but if you have them, you can put them, for example, the environment compliance certificates, and you take the uh, verifier entity as usual. The management report, which is very important for SMEs, you will see when I will uh, present the mandatory and optional field, that the management report is mandatory for SMEs, but for the corporates, the uh, end of year and uh, the start uh, year and end of year reports are mandatory. So here you have just to put the name of the report, which is the management report, the start date, the end of date, and uh, you will have it in this tab. Uh, the bank statement, if you have it, okay, the bank statement from, for example, January, the, the starting year and the end of year, okay, the rating, you are not concerned, and you, you tick, as usual, the verifier. At the, um, uh, the last step is the association and membership. For example, uh, if you are part of uh, an association or organization, uh, for, example, for example, Logistic and Transport Association of Nigeria, or Nasima, uh, Nasima, I'm part of Nasima, you can uh, put the information here and now continue. So at the last step, you will have the summary, the, the, the summary, sorry, of the, of the, of the full uh, data of the entity, starting by the identification, the ownership and management, the business information, the compliance information, the financial information and the other information. So now it means that you are you, you have to put all your information. You have just to tick complete here. It will go now for approval for verifier. 
when it is verified, all this information now, we proceed to publish the profiles onto the platform. So let me just share with you quickly this, uh, this uh, the profile that I created yesterday, um, which is uh, this company name that you see here. Um, let me come back. Okay, you see here, when I go in Nigeria, because I created the profile in Nigeria, you'll see African Logistic and Transport Incorporation. So I, if I need to go to see the report, I just visit the profiles, okay? And I will see exactly the same classification that the step seven of the process. And let me show you the report that you finally get from the platform. This is African Logistic and Transport Incorporations. So this is the summary of the, the, of the business of the company. This is the logo I have created with the six class of uh, information, identification, African Logistic and Transport Incorporation, with all the information I put here during the, during the identification, external auditors, okay? Um, so ownership and management, uh, ultimate beneficiary owners, board of directors. So all these information are in these reports uh, so, uh, that I create with now the supporting documents uh, that you have uploaded. So this is how the process um, uh, is. And let me uh, just uh, conclude my presentation with, um, with the, 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 the mandatory and, and optional field for, for each of the corporates. For example, for the SMEs, the list of supporting documents uh, as follow, supporting document. What is mandatory here, if you see, is the company registration document. This is mandatory. That's why I, during my preliminary speech, I said that it should be ready when you are about to register your company. Okay. Second mandatory documents um, uh, document is the declaration of ultimate beneficiary owners. We need to know who are the person or the entities behind the shares of the company. Okay. And the shareholder list here. Okay, uh, compliance information, nothing is uh, mandatory here, but if you have, you can also uh, input. Uh, the financial information is the management report. The management report here is uh, mandatory for SMEs, okay, and the other information are optional. Um, for, the, uh, for the corporates, What is mandatory is also still the company registration documents, the declaration of uh, ultimate beneficiary owner, the shareholder list. But here, the difference is the compliance questionnaire field. So it is important to also fill this, uh, this, this information. And another difference is the annual report. For the car corporate, we need the annual report to be ready. And as you see, the management report are optional here, but the annual report need to be uh, to be read. So these are mainly the information we are collecting on the platform to um, to, 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 to to contribute for the for the for the entities. So to conclude, let me just uh, um, uh, mention the fact that we have discussed with Nasima and uh, we are about to plan training session which will be organized uh, to assist the Nasima members to contribute on Mansa. I think that Mr. Ope will talk about this and we will plan for this session uh, to, to, to assist you in contributing your information on, on Mansa. This is uh, uh, where I want to, to, to land. So thank you for your attention. If you have any question, I am available to respond. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pap, uh, for that very comprehensive uh, presentation on the process of signing up onto Mansa and contributing uh, information as well. Uh, before we proceed, uh, I would want to, I would like to recognize the presence of the Vice Chairman of the Nasima AFCTA Committee, in the person of Prince David Iweta, who will be making uh, some input and some comments uh, immediately after our question and answer uh, session. Uh, so just before we go into the question and answer session, uh, I would want to confirm uh, Pap's um, comments that Nasima is working with Afrex Bank to assist members to sign up to 
the Mansa platform. Uh, as you can see already, it, 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 it may look like a very cumbersome process. And we understand that business people may um, have other things on their priority list, which is why one, uh, we ask that one of the first things you would want to do is to appoint a focal person within your organization, uh, a sort of administrator, a verifier, or a checker. But at the same time, the proposed structure is one where uh, Nasima will act as a verifier. Nasima member city chambers, business associations, state chambers, bilateral chambers will also be requested to act as verifiers of their members. So if a particular company is a member of Abuja Chamber, we would request that the Abuja Chamber also signs up to the Mansa platform as a verifier. So that the Abuja Chamber can assist its members to um, have access to a larger African market simply by being listed on Mansa and obtaining an African enterprise identification uh, number. So the structure is the Chambers of Commerce act as verifiers. At the same time, we hope to be able to assist individual members. If you do not have the time, if you're very busy, we hope to be able to assist you in actual contribution by helping you to upload your document. This is the essence of the training program that has been alluded to by PAP, which will occur regionally with the support of the NASMA AFCTA committee and other agencies that may be willing to support this initiative. So with that, um, we will go into the question and answer sessions. There are three ways in which you can ask your questions. There is a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. You could also um, type your question in the chat. Um, and then you could also uh, signify by raising your hands to have the opportunity to speak, but you would be limited to just a minute of speech. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll just go straight into the questions that are being asked. So, Pap, the first question is for you. Um, is asking that you repeat. Um, what the comments you made about the authorization letter that a, a potential contributor needs to provide. What's that authorization letter? Is this something external that they need to get? Um, could you please clarify that point? Okay, thank you, dear Aja. Um, in fact, this document is a um, document coming from the entity to authorize uh, uh, an appointed uh, person to manage the profile of the entity on the platform, to give rights to this uh, person to manage the profile. So to update or to delete any information regarding the entity. So this person will be, uh, uh, how I can say, uh, the person handling the, 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 and managing the, 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 the profiles on to the platform. But it needs to be filled and signed by the entity to appoint someone or two person or three uh, from the enti entity to manage the profile. Just, to, yes. just to add on to the please. Just to add on to what Papa has said, uh, we have the format. So what we will do, it's among the package we will send to you, including the contributor agreement. So when we send it to you, just for you to uh, fill in those blank uh, spaces, who is the authorized um, um, individual who will be managing your platform? Because the Mansa platform doesn't allow anybody into the platform. You must be an authorized person to have access into the platform, just like Pap demonstrated. So the format, we have the template. So we just send it to, it's it's among the documents Nasima already has. So they will be forwarding it to you for, for just for execution. You just put in the name of the administrator you want to manage your, and then you would say you authorize the person to be in charge of the entity's um, information on the Mansa platform, that's all. And you sign off and then stamp. Uh, thank you very much, Maureen. wants to authorize one of your staff or someone within your organization to be the one to administer your information on Mansa. So this is what is being referred to here as authorization. Um, Pap, the second question again. Uh, can we have slides for this presentation? Because I'm sure, uh, 
I, I want to have. Oh, okay, you are breaking. Can you repeat again? Because okay. yes. So the second question, um, the second question, can from Juliet Aibe, can we have these slides? Uh, because there's so much information and it makes it impossible to absorb at once. So the request is for uh, whether the slides and the presentations made today will be made available to participants. Okay, what we'll do is during the training session, we will prepare a support uh, on PowerPoint, you know, so um, while we are training people, they will have it in front of them, but after we can share with them. So it's not a problem. We can share okay, with but them. Is, there, is there anything that can be shared after yes. today's webinar? Any, yes. even if it's the flyers yes, yes. and all that, yeah. Yes, I can share with you this, uh, this process so they can digest before the training. Yeah, we have the contributor guide. Yes, guide. Uh -huh. yes the user contributor guide. So we, it tells you the processes and what to yes. do next and then. So we okay. have that one. We can share that with that us. Okay. Okay, so the next question from Mr. T. Oyewole, and it's a two-part question. Part A, why isn't trade facilitation platform incorporated into Mansa? And then part B, the CDD and KYC is ultimately about facilitating trade and not just information for information's sake. So I guess this question is, um, why isn't, why are, they, why are there multiple platforms? Why isn't trade facilitation, which is a different platform by Afrex and Bank, not incorporated into Mansa? Could you, uh, whether yeah. Madam Maureen or? Yes, um, I thank you very much, Okwe. Um, I think uh, one thing you will understand at, um, the, uh, at, at the starting point when I was giving my opening remarks, I talked about the challenges we are having in the continent and uh, on KYC issues. And this was built on that premise so that we have that focus. Even the trade facilitation platform, it comes, you see, already we are having the argument that um, this is um, actually quite a, a, quite a um, sort of a, uh, fortified with information. And you don't want a situation whereby you will ask, we will ask a, um, a contributor to fill out a form and say, oh, this is too cumbersome, too many questions and all that. So we are focusing this on KYC, given those challenges we are having. The trade facilitation platform, which we are building, we have, again, a lot of information which will help you. This is part of it, of course. And this is the first step if you will agree with me, if you go into any organization, even when you do your due diligence, they ask you the first question the bank asks you is who are you? You have to do your KYC first before. So before we go into trade, facilita trade facilitation platform, you have to do the primary one. And this helps in other platform. We have the PAPS, which is the payment and, uh, 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 payment and settlement platform, which the bank is putting in place also, that will facilitate again intra-African trade under the AFTA. So you can see there's the trade information portal. So all these KYC has a role to play in each, in each and every one of them. So we want to single out the KYC platform to make it distinct so that you will see these, once you have this, you are free to do everything. The trade information, the trade facilitation profile is just a platform. It's just to tell you, to ask you to do, transact your business. But if you don't have this in place, you cannot transact your business. So I don't know if this is clear to you. Thank you. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, madam. Very clear with regards to the fact that there are uh, the trade facilitation boosting intra-Africa trade is one gigantic program, but has been broken into uh, multiple platforms, all which will work together to facilitate trade. Thank you for that. Um, so onto the chat box, um, the questions are more likely the same. It's just a, a comment made by Idris Yusuf requesting that, um, first of all, this presentation be made in multiple languages, English, French, Arabic, Portuguese, Swahili, Spanish, and also, um, apart from having the um, tutorial or the training in PDF, perhaps short videos will be very beneficial uh, as well. So th those are the questions that we have on the chat box and the Q&A. Um, okay. Yes. 
Yes, May I just respond to those two? Um, Please go ahead. The bank's language, we have four languages in the bank, Arabic, French, English, and of course, uh, Portuguese. Um, for th those are the four language, the four main languages. We can go ahead with the Swahili and bet we want to produce documents that when people read it, they won't have issues. Um, even translating from French to English, uh, we see some, uh, some uh, translators having issues in getting them done. So um, I have been talking to our regional office in, uh, in Harare, if we can get a good Portuguese translator to start translating the, um, the Mansa documents, because we have a humongous document and more are still coming out on Mansa that will enable you to actually digest the Mansa platform. So you have the policies, the different uh, uh, agreements, you have the agency agreement, the guidelines and the rest of it. So all those, and you have the flyers, the flyers, we already have them existing in, the, in those languages. But those documents that are technical and legal, you have to pay attention so that you don't send a wrong information out there. But if we have uh, translate, um, translators, very good translators into the other languages, why not? We'll go ahead and uh, and do that. Um, the other question speaks to Okmay. Please, can you remind me? I don't know uh, about key. videos about creating oh, we short have, videos. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. we have developed a how to video. So I think uh, we can share that. Um, it's it's uh, we have the eight minutes. They are now producing the one hour video. So if you will have the um the uh the the um the stamina to wait, to look at those videos, because at times some uh, argue that the video is too long. So we try to summarize it in eight minutes. Pap, is it eight minutes or 12 minutes? You, we, eight minutes, eight minutes. We can share that with you. It shows yes. the process flow. Again, the Intra-African Trade Fair, the virtual trade fair, which of course is a, is a, is a, is a type of platform that you go in to negotiate and buy and sell. And we are like, uh, as you are all aware, we are having the Intra-African Trade Fair this year in Kigali in September by the help, by the grace of God, if uh, COVID allows us. It was supposed to be done last year, or incidentally, the pandemic did not allow us to hold it physically. So this year, we hope we hold it physically. The first one was held in, uh, in uh, Cairo, Egypt in 2018. So we do it every two, two years. And we were supposed to do 2020. Incidentally, the pandemic did not allow, but it has been slated for 2021. Kigali, Rwanda, Kigali. That platform, that uh, um, trade fair is the first of its kind. If I, in Africa, and I think globally as well, because it brings all traders buying and selling all over Africa, even outside Africa. Last in the first one witnessed about 70, about 7,000 participants. That was the first one. And we were lucky we have a very good, uh, um, uh, a good uh, trade fair complex in Egypt that was able to accommodate. And they were still finishing the building, uh, the, the structure then. So you can see some uncompleted structure to accommodate that type of uh, influx. So I think uh, for 2020, um, 2021, Kigali is ready, given the Kigali Convention Center, and it's quite huge. So we will uh, see how it goes. And again, just to remind, just to let you inform you that Mansa has been taken to the highest level. We are, um, they, they, uh, we are we were supposed to present at the summit, the AU ministerial summit, so that Africa can adopt it as the hub for due diligence matter on the continent. Also, um, in addition, we are working towards, you can, if you go on the platform, you will see the legal entity identifier code as well. We are using it as well. And we are working towards getting the accreditation because the EU last year, October, came up with uh, a new regulation that cross-border transactions and, uh, and trading must have the LEI so that you will know who you are trading with. 
and ensure that the, the information you have about the entity is authentic and credible. So this is what Mansa is doing in Africa and EU has come up with similar, uh, sim similar code as well for all cross-border transactions. So if you're trading uh, between Nigeria and uh, Russia, for instance, or Belarus, or the rest of it, you, you, you are Europe as a whole, you must have that LEI code. Thank you. So back to thank you, Tobin. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam Maureen. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's very clear, the answer to those two questions, the interpretation to other languages and the need for videos. Coincidentally, just one last question that has come in, you have also touched on partially. Uh, Mr. Toy uh, Oye Wallace um, inquiring about the relationship between um, the Nasima Market Access Platform um, and the AFREX Embankment. So that question I'll take myself and then I'll call on the Vice Chairperson, Vice Chairman of the AFCT Committee to make some brief remarks. So essentially, Mr. Uh, Oye Wale, both platforms, um, the, the collaboration that is happening between Nasima and, and AFREX Bank is such that we are hoping in the not too distant future for both platforms to speak to themselves. Because from the get go, um, both our teams understand and realize that there are so many platforms out there now where um, information is being collected and business people will be put to test to leave their, uh, their normal business uh, activities and be updating multiple platforms left, right and center. So already from day one, Mansa and Nasima have already started discussing a way where both platforms can speak together, such that on the Nasima market access platform, you will be requested for your AEI. It, it will not be compulsory, but you will be encouraged to have an African enterprise identifier so that when Nasima is trying to promote the trade of its, uh, of its members, promote their businesses, um, anybody who automatically clicks on them to buy will be able to say, oh, these people are featured on Mansa. Let me click and extract their Mansa information to establish uh, trust. Um, as a matter of fact, Nasma is now working only with Mansa. We've held a, a webinar with PAPS. The aspect of PAPS is such that it will help our members trade without worrying about um, foreign exchange without worrying about third party foreign exchange in order to buy and sell. So all these collaborations are all towards um, the objective of intra-African trade, even if each one picks a specific item like Manta, due diligence, KYC, uh, PAPS, payments, the African trade uh, platform and so on and so forth. So with these, um, may I call on the Vice Chairman. Okay, just, sorry, just to add on, even for you to have access to PAPS, you must have your Mansa AEI. So that, because that will facilitate your transaction um, in, in, a, in, a, in a click of the button, on, you will just transact your business. Once your AEI code, why is it so? Because the moment you have your AEI, it certifies you that this, this entity has already been, uh, has gone through the KYC process and is found to be um, an entity that we can deal with. So you don't need to go through the rigors of starting all over again to look for KYC information, bring this, bring that, because you're already on the Mansa platform and your information is complete and verified and authenticated. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ron. Um, so I give the floor to Prince David Ewetla to make some brief remarks, and then the DJ of Nasima, Ambassador Ayola Olupani will give the vote of thanks. Thank you. Um, I, it looks like Prince Iwita is on the call. I think he's muted. If, uh, I'm David, muted. Prince, can you unmute? Um, all right. Okay. okay. I want to thank every woman of uh, Nasima after and the national president of Nasima and uh, the secretariat of Nasima for this well uh, positioned uh, webinar. 
which has been quite clear and every one of us have enjoyed to a very large extent the quality of this meeting. Uh, just having said that, I want to draw attention on a few points that I tried to pencil down during the presentation at various segments. One of them I observed is uh, in the form that was that was designed by Mansa in uh, by the KYC uh, okay. participant or the operator or an intending exporter, where we said the form the App applicant will complete a section with AS, a HS code and tariff. Now, at this point, the harmonization on the HS code for existing prior to after may not apply in the APSA, in the after operation. And it may not be the same because it's supposed to be a zero tax. Some countries that have agreed to trade together are coming with an agreed tariff structure. So I see that as one issue pressed. Then going further, we see a lot of uh, large groups as in export processing zone operators who would, whether APSA or not, they are qualified to export their goods to any country under zero tariff, just considering the Angola of the United States of America and other countries that have signed such treaty. And also the goods going into those countries irrespective of where they come from, because of the Export Processing Zone Authority, even in the one at the UK that harmonizes all export trades under the Free Trade Zone program, enjoy such you know, deep, uh, opportunity. So I want also to see where our own program recognizes all of these futures. Then again, we have informal exporters that they are micro exporters who will produce some very uh, small quantity, they are comfortable at it, put it in a truck or in a bus or in a car, and they go to those country, buy, whether they be produced in Nigeria or Congo or Republic of Benin. How are those kind of micro export trade going to be captured under this KYC program, or they are not going to fall in within these brackets? Going to that, I also want to invoke the Madame Morin member of uh, AfriExim. With this robust network, if there could be a window of funding of projects of the persons that have been profiled under the KYC to have funding access that is provided by AfriExim, targeted at products that are produced exclusively for export under after. And in trying to create that in one cupboard, Nasima could be in the warehouse such that we create what is called warehouse warranty, where those goods that are eligible under the structure of export or tariff, whatever it is, will qualify. And all of this warehouse uh, uh, warranties, each person will pay. Consolidation to make for a Z quantity to meet a contract that will be signed on the other side of the country. So I think this hope and exciting to participants in Nigeria, particularly a single digit interest rate in export in a sustain those that are willing to export in this 
uh, program and package. So these, I think, are issues. If we can address them now, yes, but if we cannot, I think they are very fundamental to seeing that after become successful with if we address the area of funding using the warehouse warranty option. I, I want to thank every one of us, and I think this issue maybe in the future could be considered uh, going forward. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you David. Thank you, David. We've taken MM, that. Do you want to, MM, MM, would you want to respond to him quickly before we round off because of time? Okay, thank you very much, uh, sir. No more. I think yes. uh, just to take on the informal market, um, we are actually, that's why when I started, we said we want to actually educate our SMEs and start bringing them up to speed by providing them mm -hmm. the opportunity so that they will start putting their information on the Mansa platform to help them to grow their business and expand. It's because these informal markets, they have constraints in going to the bank and standing for hours and doing that. They cannot, they are the cash and carry type of business. So they carry their goods across the border, they sell, they come back and the next day they are gone again. So, but if we have a tool like the Mansa, the PAPS, which is Pan-African Payment and Settlement System, they don't have to travel all that, the rigors of travel and spending days on the way on the road. They don't have to. So these are some of the educations we have to actually give to our public. So the, um, the, um, the Mansa Nasima uh, uh, work group uh, uh, training, uh, training, which we are going to do, for our SMEs and uh, the rest of them, that will help us to enlighten them on the benefits of having them on the master platform. And I think they will jump at that. On the funding yeah. assistance, African Bank has come up with what we call FEDA. It's a subsidiary. And what is that FEDA? It's Fund for Export Development in Africa. They actually are working, we are there, we are receiving uh, demand. We are receiving demands and requests for entities, SMEs that don't have fund, that don't have capitals, either to extend their business, expand their business, or um, start a business. So we look at the KYC information is very critical. Um, actually, they are breaking away. They are going to. Kigali at the end of the year. That is that we, they will be headquartered in Kigali. Probably if you had witnessed one of our ceremonies earlier this year, um, the government of Kigali um, signed the agreement to host um, the FEDA subsidiary of Afrexim Bank, which is Fund for Export Development in Africa. And again, these are some of the benefits once you are on Mansa that will help you because you said access to international financing and domestic funding as well. So we have other entities like the World Bank has approached Mansa to say, how can we assist you? If you go to their website today, you will see the Mansa um, information, Mansa flyer, they're helping us. We are trying to um, actually establish an MOU with them whereby they will help us to, uh, they said they can help us to fund some entities in Africa. So we have to identify those entities and they have to come up in our MOU, they have to come up to tell us which type, which sectors of the economy, African economies, they will be able to assist. So I think these are the two key questions um, for exporters in, our, in Africa. We are trying yeah, to encourage them to ensure that they produce, uh, they maintain the quality of goods they export. Because in some cases, after one or two exports, or you start seeing the, uh, the quality falling. So we will encourage them to maintain that quality. Rather, they should increase on the quality. So I think uh, exporters, uh, we, that's why, that is one of the benefits of Mansa because we will encourage you to start transforming your produce from raw materials to finished goods. We do it, we have what we call the African Cocoa Initiative. It's AfriCoin. We have it already. We want to replicate it in the other uh, in the other sectors of the economy. Today, we fund cocoa industries in the four export, in the four mm -hmm. main countries in Africa. We have already, we have uh, plot uh, enterprises in Ghana. It's a woman business, but today it manufactures cocoa, it manufactures chocolate um, from cocoa 
manufactured sweets and cocoa drinks and the rest of it for exports. The same thing in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, South Cacao. We are, we, we are funding that as well. The build factory to enable them to process a separate cocoa from butter and the paste and the rest of it. So I think that's the answer to the two questions that were raised. I don't know if I meet your expectation, okay. uh, Prince. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Maureen. Uh, just a quick one, just uh, for point of information, uh, just in support of uh, what Maureen has uh, said very brilliantly. With FEDA coming up in uh, Kig uh, housing in Kigali, uh, locally here in Nigeria, also the export, the EDF Export Development Fund, you know, has now been activated, and uh, this will really support SMEs. So we're encouraging SMEs, you know, to. As soon as uh, the, the flag off, which is any time from now, you know, to make their own uh, presentation so that uh, the Export Development Fund, you know, which has been fully funded now, you know, can support export activities. So this will really help Nigerian SMEs. And Nasima is participating very, very heavily in this. Uh, we are members of the Board of Trustees of the Export Development Fund. So a lot of members can access uh, uh, the funding, especially SMEs, you know, to promote their business. This is just a point of information. Thank you, Maureen, for that uh, brilliant uh, uh, support and answers you've given to the questions raised. Thank you. Uh, okay, you can take it over now so that we can... Uh, again. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, if, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to crave your indulgence for just a bit more time. Also on this call is the National Treasurer of Nasima, uh, Professor Kunle Wahab, who has uh, indicated and has had his hand raised for the past 10 minutes, wishing to have the floor. So I know we're like 15 minutes beyond time, but I crave your indulgence as I hand the floor over to uh, Professor Kunle Wahab for his comments. For the to speak, I hope you are hearing me loud and clear. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. We do, sir. Yes, yes, sir. We do. yes, sir. We do. We do. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. Just, just one less than one minute uh, intervention. Um, I've enjoyed what I've had, but I want to find find out whether there will be a proceeding of uh, this uh, transaction this afternoon, this morning afternoon. For the people who participated, that's all I wanted to know, sir. Am I communicating? Do you mean like a recording of this? Hello. Yes, you are. Hello, I... sir. Okay. Yeah, the question I was raising is whether the, a, a proceeding of uh, this conversation this morning or afternoon will be circulated to participants. Yes, sir. In, in two ways. First of all, we will upload this we will upload the recording, the video recording of the meeting on our YouTube, uh, the Nasima YouTube channel. Secondly, all the uh, documents that uh, we have at the ability, including those that our uh, top view of African Bank will share with us, will also be distributed to all the participants, even if they didn't attend. Uh, but finally, a summary of the proceedings will be available at the uh, level of the committee, the ASCT committee. So, yes, the proceedings will be available, sir. Okay, then, thank you very much. It's been a very useful morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so, right. as, we, as we conclude this webinar, uh, I now give the floor over to the Director General of NASIMA, Ambassador Ayola Olukoni, who would be giving uh, the vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Okwe. Uh, National President Ajia Sratu Yaliu, the Chairman of the um, AFCT Committee in person of Engineer uh, Jani Ibrahim, um, the Vice Chair, Chief David Ueta, also our national treasurer was just spoken. Then our dear colleagues uh, in uh, Mamsa and the team lead, including my, my dear sister, Mori. And thank you very much. Once again, I think we've had a very, very useful conversation. And I think uh, this conversation 
um, the dialogue series and collaboration with um, Man with um, Afrexim and Mansa Afrexim, I think has confirmed one again that, uh, like we say, uh, indeed Mansa is the answer um, when it comes to the question of international trade and all these issues which we've discussed. I don't want to repeat all of these things which have been said, since we are going to get also the various report. I just want to thank the Mansa team. Um, you've seen how committed we are in Nasima to work closely with you. Um, to, you know, to use the expression in the secretariat to concretize the abstraction. Um, because if out there, a lot is still abstract to most people. Um, they talk about Afrexim, they talk about what is this Mansa you're talking about? What, what is the AFCT you're talking about? Um, so I think this dialogue, which we have just had, and the various areas which have been touched on in the question of the need for you to have a Mansa ID, uh, the possibility of accessing fund um, is can be given concrete meaning. And I'm saying that against the background of what happened at the induction for the Nigerian ambassadors. I just came back this morning from Abuja. I was also invited uh, for the induction and the training program. And the AFCTA and WTO trading and all other things were part of the issues which were discussed with over 100 Nigerian newly appointed ambassadors. And the question they were asking, that look, listen, we don't have enough information about this AFCTA. We know as a country, Nigeria will play a very key important role. How do we do it? What do we do? How many of us know anything about it? And that tells you the work which is still ahead of us. But it also tells us that indeed, um, because since Nasima was the only one from the OPS that was invited, and I, of course, um, if you want to say that maybe this was a question of man, no man, and that was why the DG Nasima was invited. But I think it from a recognition of the role Nasima would play in supporting this Nigerian ambassador. But not only that, they also will have role to play in context of the AFCTA and what we will do. And so what I'm saying in this is that in context of other assignment, Nasima and Mansa, uh, we also have a duty to support these people. So when they reach out to us, it will be possible for us to be able to have engagement with them, maybe at the regional level, in terms of the regional in terms of the ambassador or some of the strategic missions that will play a, a important role. I just thought I should fly that kite as far as our assignment, Nasima and Mansa itself is concerned. Um, once again, I don't want to dwell too long. Um, all the points have been raised. And I think we will, out of that point, we're also developing something, 20 points and 20 things to know about the EFCT or Mansa, um, which we will use as part of our advocacy tool, as also part of information tool. Um, once again, Mexibian, thank you very much. Um, the Nasima Mansa you know, relationship uh, is, 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 is going on to higher level. And I'm sure we'll be able to add value as far as your question of uh, you know, ensuring that truly Africans can trade with themselves and a lot of trading in Africa can, and trading in Africa can also include. Um, and thank, we also have good news. Our dear, our dear sister, um, Mrs. Iwela is also in WTO too as well now. And I'm thinking one of these days we'll also have some things to do with us. I wish all of us a very productive uh, weekend, a restful weekend. And um, once again, thank you very much. We rest assured of our continued collaboration from the Nasima sector. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. I hope we'll, in, um, we'll organize um, sooner um, a type of workshop with the WTO so we can educate them on Mansa as well. Um, um, I, I, um, I used to know, um, you know, um, and Dr. Okonji Wela when we had our meeting in 2005 in, uh, in uh, Ghana an extraordinary meeting, 1st of April. She came in, she was the then Minister of Finance in Nigeria and uh, we had very useful discussions, both of us. So I think um, that will give us the opportunity again, if, you can, uh, if we can make that advancement to engage them so that we'll have, um, we can disseminate the Mansa Nasima collaboration and what it's all about. I think she will be very happy and excited to know about this. Thank you. Good, thank you. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, with that, we've come to the end of today's webinar. I uh, want to thank you for being patient with us. We've exceeded our allotted time by 25 minutes. 
but we thank you for your rapt attention and we look forward to seeing you at uh, the future events we will hold, uh, particularly the regional training programs we intend to organize in collaboration with Africa and Bank Mansa to continue to shed more light on this platform. Thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Thank you. 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 Yes, that is how we are going to hook you up. Yes, I think we should have something specifically in terms of uh, in terms of the feeder too as well because I mean it's a very good initiative. I think our yeah. next meeting I will invite the director there to speak. Okay, then. all right. Then. Well, Thank right. you very much. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Maxi bien, bon weekend. Bon weekend, merci. <laughs> okay, thank you.